You know, any time through the power of the Holy Ghost you present truth, there are going to be people who believe. There will be people who believe. Sometimes it's surprising to me who believes, and other times it's surprising to me who doesn't believe. But people will believe when the gospel is preached with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says some believe not. And that's just the way it is. In verse 25, the Bible says when they agreed not among themselves. They didn't have a consensus. Okay, we're all going to follow Jesus. Some of them now are going to follow Jesus, and others are not going to follow Jesus. They don't have a consensus. They agree not. The Bible says after Paul had spoken one word, here's what he said. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. I'll just read you this from Isaiah chapter 6. Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive, for the heart of this people's wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Christian, why is it that when the Holy Spirit works, that some believe and some don't believe? That's an individual hard decision. It's an individual hard decision. Individuals decide and determining whether or not they'll believe. I don't know how many times in my life I've heard people say, I wish I could believe that. And I just have to tell them, I don't believe you wish that. Because belief is a choice. Belief is a choice. Listen, there are some things that are true that you'll never believe. And there are some things that are not true that you'll never believe. Uh... This is kind of political now. Marijuana. Marijuana. Is it good or is it bad? Is marijuana good or is it bad? It's, it's funny that we, we, you know, 20 years ago you'd laugh if you were having this discussion. Uh, I was joking with some guys about it that smoked weed this week. I was giving them a hard time about it. The guy told me it's medicine. I asked him what his ailment was. And I asked him if the doctor told him to smoke it. Is that the way the prescribed method? It's like, yeah, really? It's medicine. Okay, what, what sickness do you have? And then I asked him, I was like, so the doctor told you to smoke that? You know, it was prescribed to you? Uh, well, those are interesting things. Now, I've talked to people, they, they believe. They believe that CBD or THC have effects that they need, that it's medicinal in the way that they need it. Okay? And maybe that's so. But it's interesting to me, the proponents of marijuana normally are not people who need it. Right? And the people who are against marijuana are not necessarily people who don't need it. In other words, I'm against it. I'll just tell you, I don't like drugs. I'm against all drugs. I, I uh, broke my foot a couple of weeks ago and it swells up every day. And I've been taking some Advil, but I stopped taking it. And I'm uh, done with it. I just take as much as I have to until, it, until I can wear a shoe and then we're good. And, you know, at the end of the day, you elevate and do it again the next day. I don't like drugs at all. I don't like taking anything. I'm anti-drugs. And it might be, it could be possible that marijuana would help my foot. And I'll never take it because of my preconception. I'm against drugs and I'm against marijuana because it's a drug. You say, Pastor, it's an herb. We just smoke them all, right? You know, I mean, come on. I'm against it, right? That's my predisposition. Now, it might be in our church that there are people that are pro marijuana. We're more, it's less likely, but I know there are some people in our church that that's kind of a new issue. Like, you know, really, Pastor, you Christians are against weed? You know, I understand that. But let me just tell you something. It is very, very highly unlikely that Pastor Price will ever participate knowingly in anything to do with an extract or anything to do with it because I'm against it. And science can't convince me. Even though there may be convincing science. Do you hear me? You say, Pastor, well, I'm open to it. Yeah, well, science will convince you. And even if it were harmful to you or ultimately would cause cancer, which it does seem like there are studies that are showing that smoking weed is causing lung cancer. Even if that were showed to you, you're for it. And you'll never be convinced that it's bad. 
Same is true with people who smoke cigarettes. It's just, you believe what you're going to believe. And anybody can show you anything and you'll have a reason to believe that it isn't so, at least for you. Because we believe what we choose to believe. Now, I'm not going to say to you that everything is just open to a belief choice. Truth is truth. And it finds its source in God. And if it's true, it's true whether you accept it or reject it, whether I accept or reject it. I don't decide whether it's true, and you don't decide whether it's true. It's true because God says so, and you can know what God says by knowing His Word. Amen. So you can have truth, and you can know you're right about it. And here are people that have had the Word of God open to them and proved to them that Jesus is the Christ. And by the way, try this for yourself. If you're an individual or you know someone who believes the prophecy of the Scripture regarding the Messiah, the King of the Jews, understand and know that according to Daniel chapter 9, it is impossible for there to be a future Messiah. There isn't a chance. Now, if a person wanted to forsake of argument to say that someone else who was born exactly the time that Jesus was born was the Messiah, well, then everything else would have to line up. He'd have to be from Egypt. He'd have to be uh, from Galilee. He'd have to be from Bethlehem. He'd have to uh, be sinless. He'd have to be born of a virgin. He'd have to fulfill all these prophecies of the Scripture regarding the Messiah, which Jesus did. He would have to fulfill the law, which Jesus did. And there's no one else. And so if you won't believe in Jesus, if you won't accept Him as the Christ, as the one who fulfilled the Scriptures, my friend, you're left with no alternative. You don't have another Messiah you can believe in. If the Jews will not receive Jesus as their Messiah, according to their Scriptures, there's not another available. There will not be another available. It is a couple thousand years too late. And so when we talk about believing or not believing, we're not talking about good information versus other good information. We're talking about truth and error. And that is the truth about Jesus Christ, my friend. If you want to not believe in God, you can come up with some bad theories for other gods or even a theory for no God, but you'll have no truth with it. And so having said that, anyone who wants to believe can. And anyone who does not believe they believe because they do not want to. So when someone says to me, I wish I could believe, no, you don't. I don't believe that. If you wanted to believe, you could. You could look at the Scripture and you would find that the Holy Spirit of God, listen to what I said, the Holy Spirit of God would take the Scripture and confirm it in your heart if you wanted to believe. This is why I tell people who are searching. By the way, I love apologetics uh, for Christians mostly. I love evidences. I love Christian science research. I think it's beneficial. I think it's helpful. It affirms our faith. It, it gives us ways to challenge people who don't believe. It's sort of like answering a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. It, it accomplishes that purpose. But understand and know this. No evidence you give is going to result in belief of a person who chooses not to believe. And if any person wants to believe, this is why we hand out this little booklet, Genesis, John, and Romans. Genesis 1 through 3 that talks about origins, the origin of creation, of sin, and the promise of the Messiah. John, which explains that Jesus is the Word that pre-existent Christ who was there at creation. And Romans that teaches doctrine about the simplicity of salvation by faith in Christ alone. And I believe that any person will read the, that pamphlet, read that booklet with the heart of belief. By the time they get done reading the Gospel of John, 
They'll have everything they need in order to be confidently assured that Jesus is the Christ and to be born again. You want to live in uncertainty? You want to not know who God is? Because my friend, what I'm saying to you is not that you will have arguments that give you confidence. What I'm saying to you is that God is real. And His Spirit really moves and works in lives. And He really speaks to people who are willing to hear Him. And He uses His Word to do so. And He affirms to us that this book is His perfect Word. And when He does that, my friend, you have a real experience that is without argument. Amen. If you want to believe. And that's all you need. I will never believe that I can convince anybody of the truth of the Scripture or the truth about Christ with the words of wisdom because of the fact that people believe or don't believe based on, the, on their personal choice. And I can do nothing to sway that. Now, I can make you look silly in front of someone else. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, there's facts. That will make a person who is wise in their own conceit look like a fool. But they'll never know it. They'll never know it. If I have a Jehovah's Witness that has another Jehovah's Witness in training with them, and they knock on my door, if they're by themselves, I won't bother. I won't talk to them. So I don't want to talk to you. But if there's somebody with them, I'll let them bring up a doctrine, and I'll deal with it, and I'll make them look like a fool. And they'll walk away thinking, boy, I sure showed him. But the person that listened to the dialogue might know differently. Because people that are wise in their own conceit are wise in their own conceit. I remember years ago, a Jehovah's Witness waiting for me uh, outside of our church van. I was in Delray Beach, and I was just going to, I was grabbing a steak to throw on the grill for lunch, back when steaks used to be cheap, a matter of years ago. And uh, I, I was at Winn Dixie, and I stopped it. I was, I, I, I grabbed a steak, and I was, I was young, so I was moving, not running, but I was moving at a pace that would be like me running today. I was in a hurry. I was headed to the church van and it said West Park Baptist Church, Delray Beach, Florida, whatever. And there was a guy standing at my door, my van, waiting. And I go to, you know, I was like, he's blocking my door. And uh, he's Joe's witness, and he wanted to talk to me, wanted to debate me. And I told him, I said, I'm going to eat lunch. I got a steak here. I want to throw it on the grill. I want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, and, uh, he wanted to debate things, and so we talked about, you know, the did you know God has a name, and um, the, you know, you die and you go into the earth, and yada yada yada. And I and so I got my Bible, and we went through some passages, and and I just showed him if, with the Jehovah's Witnesses. You just read the rest of the passage, you'll see that whatever context they're teaching, they're pulling it from its context. So they've all they've only read that the scriptures pulled out of context and mixed together. They never read it in context. And so I told him, I said, listen, man, every time you brought something up, we've seen the Bible shows that it's not what you're saying it means. And then he said, well, answer me this one, answer me this one question. Where is the word Trinity found in the Bible? And I said, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible. And he started running away and he goes, ha! He won the argument. Because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. The Godhead, the word Godhead's in the Bible. And it, it means Trinity. And of course, the Bible teaches the Godhead very, very plainly. But in his mind, he won the argument because I said, before I could say anything else, the word Trinity is not found anywhere in the Bible. People believe what they want to. Mm -hmm. They believe what they want to, and they're going to do that. That has nothing to do with how the Holy Spirit of God works in the church. And Christian, we are part of a powerful organism an alive body that has God's Spirit with us. And if you're here today, God's moved and you've heard Him. And you've recognized Him. And you might be here today and you say, I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear that. Well, I did. I am. Because God's real. And for people that believe, it's real. People that don't believe doesn't mean you're right. You just figured out a way to not listen to the Spirit of God. And Isaiah said that this people, their heart are waxed cold 
their hearings waxed cold. Your ability to hear God is going to decrease, not increase, and you better be afraid about that. If you make a choice of unbelief, my friend, your ability to, to believe is going to be diminished, not increased. And you won't be better for it. You won't have more truth. You may want to escape God's work in your life and His dealing with your heart. And you might be able to quench the Spirit. You might be able to grieve the Spirit. You might get Him to let you alone. But friend, you won't have truth. And that's ultimately what Paul said. He said, you know what? From henceforth, I'm going to take the Gospel to the Gentiles. It's what God wants me to do. It's what I'm going to do. He became known as the Apostle of the Gentiles. Never lost his love for the Jewish brethren. But we see the evolution of the church. We've seen it in Acts, and we've seen more than that. We've seen all the various ways the Holy Spirit of God works. Even in this last instance where we see many believe, many don't believe. That was true then, and it's still true today.